Hey, good morning, all, and uh, welcome to the 43rd Caller Lab Convention, Norfolk, Virginia. Today is March the 22nd, Tuesday, March 22nd, um, and the name of this session is Blast from the Past. And as you can tell from our write-up of that session, a lot of this is on styling and teaching and things that you may think there's not enough time to cover in your new dancer program, but we uh, agree and or we disagree with that uh, statement, and we tend to talk about that as we go through our session this morning. My name is Mike Seastrom. I'm from Los Angeles, California. We have John Jones from Arlington, Texas, I believe, John. We have um, Tim Crawford and Jim Mayo, which will they're probably uh, en route. And this is Jim over here, and uh, they're probably en route as we speak. How many of you in present, you know, right now today are uh, teaching new dancers or are involved with the new dancer programs? Great to hear. Great to hear. You know, it's interesting that we call, we still, there's still a, that lingering word of beginners. Uh, and and a lot of us have, have try really hard to get away from beginner dancers. We just, I, I try really hard to call them new dancers. It's kind of like the old term levels. We used to call the programs, uh, our dance programs, levels. And we kind of got away from that. And, and I, I was never a, one that understood why we, the terminology in, in, uh, in our speaking is, is important. But it, it, I have found over the years that when I call my new dancers new dancers versus beginners, it's just a little bit more uplifting because I'm calling them dancers. And they're, da and they're dancing from the minute they walk in and the minute we start the music. They're dancing. So, so think about that. Put it in the back of your mind there that some of our terminology uh, can um, bring someone's spirits down just a little bit. And some of our terminology brings spirits up a little bit. And that makes a big difference in our programs and in, our, uh, in the learning process. How many of you teach styling, would say you teach styling and teach some of the additional things about dancing in your programs just automatically? Nice to hear. Nice to hear. Maybe we're, we're preaching to the choir this morning. I think there's a lot of us that find that we can include things in our teaching that are, are discussions about square dancing, the history, some of the things that have happened, some of the, the current makeup of dancing in your own area, just to educate the, the people and in, in the experiences they could be having as dancers. So the one thing that I find that I do not do in the first several weeks that classes are open um, is that I don't start talking about styling and hold your hands like this and do this and do that. I'm just, I want them to just have fun. I treat the first three or four weeks like a one night party and I just have a good time with them. I don't really challenge them with anything. Um, I, I don't, I don't teach them. I, I don't teach them swing. I don't have them swing someone in the first four or five weeks. I find that most people, when they walk in our door, have a, a much greater personal space than square dancers do. I think as, as people, our, we have this very close personal space. Sometimes we talk close to each other, we hug each other, we put our arms around each other. We, it's, it's just a natural sort of thing for square dancers. But the new dancers are kind of not sure about all this. And so to wrap their arms around someone that they may not know um, in a swing position, I, I, I don't tend to even approach that early on. Uh, and, and I think that what I've found over the years is that my retention rate's a little bit better if I don't cross that personal zone a little bit. But when the time close, when the class closes and everybody's moving along, then I start talking about um, swinging and, and, and showing and demoing parts of our dance and the way that we do that dance. So I, I, I first start out, John, if you don't mind, I'll speak for a couple minutes here. I first start out that, that when the dancing's a little bit different than walking. And when you walk, your heel hits the floor first. And as you walk along your posture, you're, you're more or less leaning back as we walk. Okay? And I said, if you dance an entire night with your heel hitting the floor first and then your toe hitting the floor next, you're going to be tired by the end of the evening. And so I just in, in, in the dance position, it's the ball of our foot that hits the floor first and then our heel. And there's a slightly forward lean, like we're, we're on a mission. We're dancing. We're moving with the beat of the music. And so that that, that step is, is more like this. It's more like a smooth, gliding step across the floor. It's a shorter step than walking, and we're not just strolling along. 
we're actually thinking of that beat of the music because that's part of the dance. So I get out a demonstration partner. Maybe, would you be my demonstration partner? All right. So anyway, we'd, we'd get about, but, but let's face each other. And when we do a do sa do, we're actually making some eye contact with each other. It's, 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 we're dancing with someone. So we're, we, we walk around them, we come right back again, we're right back to eye contact, and that's where it is. So you watch our dance position or, or our, our feet as we move along. It's that toe hitting first, we're walking around, we're right back to each other again, okay? And so we teach a handhold position, and I just have, say we just stay, say normally the man's palms up, the lady's palms are down. And I said, and notice my thumb is just really passive. I'm not really trying to make thumb contact on anybody, and there's never such a need to grip. Just put your hand there. Let their hand be on top of yours. I'll also talk about the fact that that it's our feet that move us through the dance. It's not our arms that pull through the dance. So when we give a handshake and we walk straight by, the minute we cross each other, we let go. It's that hand, and boom, we're by each other. If we hold on, it throws off each other or throws off the other dancer. So I'm going to hold on just a little bit. If I hold on too long, then I end up pulling her back my way. So, so it's the minute we cross each other's plane, and then I'll go on, and, and that's, that's enough of a demonstration to start with. You know, I'll just leave it like that. No, don't, don't. So, so as we go along in, in the dance, then, then I may go back at a different time or a different week, and, and particularly when I'm, I'm teaching swing because by the by the by the fifth week or the fourth week or whenever we're close, I'll start teaching a swing, okay? And I get on the floor, I have a demonstration partner, and we we go through the swing position, okay? So I'm going to put, I'll hold this just like this. So when we're in a swing position, I'm, t- I'm trying to teach them that they're almost hip to hip and that you lean back a little bit. And, John, if you have any disagreements on this or any other way to look at it, that's fine too. But the bottom line is, is, Gentlemen, you got to give a support to that lady in the back back in here. And we're looking just like this. We're looking just so you get some kind of support back in here to her back as she leans back. And we're leaning back from the waist as we walk. And we literally are going to walk around each other. And then when we're done with the swing, gentlemen, you know which way is looking in. You're going to roll her out just like that. And I don't teach a twirl or anything like that as we roll out. And hang on just a second, okay? So the, the important thing is that they're leaning back, and your center of gravity is right in here, but you're leaning back from there and, and, and motating around each other just like that. And, and, the, and the key is, is that you make eye contact as you swing, because if you're watching the wall spin around yourself, you're going you're gonna to end up getting dizzy. So make some eye contact. Smile. Make faces at each other. That kind of thing, Okay. The other thing is that there's a faster way to swing when there's motion coming into a swing. When we walk toward each other and we swing, sometimes there's a faster swing and there's possible buzz step involved or like you're on a, on, sort of like on a skateboard. So you approach each other. When you, can't, when you can't shuffle along and there's carpet, it's a lot easier on the floor. John, do you have something to add to that? No? My Same name is Rich Tobin uh, from Massachusetts, and uh, I agree, lean back and all that thing, but sometimes people will misinterpret your words. What I've seen is people who actually take their head and rear it way back here. That over-exaggeration actually hurts their dance, so that might be worth mentioning. Sure, we you're absolutely right. That. We don't teach that. But you're you absolutely right. I mean, you, you, you can. It, 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 you can I, I agree. You can say something like that. Don't, it's not that way, lean back. But the, the, it's a comfortable lean back. It's a weight, so there's a counterweight. Okay? We counter dance with one another. But I try not to get over analytical about it. Ladies, your, shoulder, your hand should be on his back so that there is, there's a solid connection there. Okay? And we all have different fits and different heights and stuff. But you shouldn't have to bend down to swing with somebody. Just bring your arms down there, swing with somebody, or swing with somebody up there. The key is, is that it's a, it's a comfortable counter dancing with equal weight across uh, uh, with each other. That's right. That's right. That, that support needs to be up here because you're leaning back and you need to have that counter dancing. Anybody else have anything, comments to make or any comments about how they teach a swing? Okay, thank you very much. So those are little things that you can teach. I have pet peeves as we go along because I really think it's important that when you teach something like a star through um, or a, um, a courtesy, well, a courtesy turn is another thing that, we all, that I'll show too. 
Um, and, John, we can do this a little bit later on as we go along. Um, but, but I have a real thing about the call star through. Let me just, <laughs> because I just, if, if a woman has to bend down and grab his hand and bring it up to get up underneath, I just think it's totally unfair and it's not the way we do this dance. Gentlemen, look at the height of the, the person you're going to do a star with and put your hand up in here so she doesn't have to duck. And I tell the gals, if you have to duck on a star through, I want you to growl at him. Just as you go underneath that star. Let him know. He's not up. He's not, doesn't have his hand up there. And, and then that hand is brought down again. But the bottom line is look at the height of the woman you're, you're doing, going to do a star through with. Put your hand up there. Let her go underneath that arch. And boom, there you go. Okay? Any other comments about that? So the, yeah, don't, don't be bad. I know it's early. So but, oh, I, w- I was waiting for a mic. I, Ted Rotwit, Pennsylvania. Uh, you have to, height goes the other way. We have five foot two men and we have, uh, we have five foot eight women. So we have to uh, counterbalance, uh, counteract it the other way also. I think the key is, is that you, we, we don't want. Be, um, just analyze and be considerate and reasonable. Yeah, I, the, the thing that I really don't like to see at all is, a, is, is that the lady has to reach down and grab his hand and pull it up enough to get underneath it. Or she has to duck underneath his hand. That's just, it's disrespectful and it's not a very courteous thing to do. Don Casper, Mannheim, Germany. What we tell our dancers on, or what I tell my dancers on, I'm, I'm teaching star through is, it's called star through. Where are the stars? They're up there. So point your fingers to the stars. Not down here. They're up there. And that helps them to remember as well. I, I love the visual hook. If you can give a visual hook in dancing, just like Don's just done here, paint that, that picture. It, the stars are up here. That, that's huge. I like that. I'm, I'm going to use that. I, I'm, I'm always looking for those kind of things because people remember with visual, with visual hooks. They remember when they see things. And when they can think about a star and put that hand up there, I think it's huge. So good, good point, Don. Good point. John, anything else? All right. You know, the hand. I'm Risha Schlitter from North Carolina. Um, one thing I often have to remind male square dance teachers is to remember the women's uh, perspective, just like you're mentioning. Uh, for instance, once you come out of a swing, the men are facing the wrong, right way, but the women are still facing the wrong way. So sometimes they forget that they need to unwrap the lady or to teach the ladies that they need to unwrap. Otherwise, I've seen beginners just kind of fumble around at the end of a swing, and they're just stuck there, and people are bumping into them because they're not sure how to proceed. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to the male callers to make sure you remember. I, I totally agree that at the end of a swing that the gentleman really needs to, to place that gal in the right position for her next call. If you're in a squared set, you're, you're, right, th- you're right on your side. If she needs to go to the corner, then, then you need to turn her out and send her that way. And, and I think that makes a huge difference. Good point. But lead her to where she has to be and do not just let her go. Yes. Got your arm on her shoulder blade. Bring it out here so she's facing the same way. And here, resist that she doesn't go further. Right. And you don't just let her go. Right. Totally. Uh, Ted Rott with Pennsylvania. Uh, when I'm, I, I mainly teach, so I, when I'm dancing with new dancers, one of the biggest problems people have is, do I use the left or right? So when I'm dancing, I exaggerate. I put my hand out way out to, to my right. And then there's only one, one arm that she can get to meet me. And I find that they, they, they get it a lot faster that way. Good point. Um, I have an angel. Oh, Mike Prescott from Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, we have an angel who has trouble with his right shoulder. He has an injury, and he can't get his right hand much up above his ear. Do you have any recommendations for how he might be able to help us start through? Because it's a little early to teach him a slide through. Right. I, I there are dancers, that, and I think this is a good point to make, it, it, and sometimes it doesn't come up until you have someone in your class that has a physical issue like this, but we dance all the time with people that have physical pro- issues with their shoulders, their hands, or whatever, and, and we tell them t- to make sure that they either tell everybody in the, in the square ahead of time, I got an issue with my right shoulder, and uh, just work with me on it, you know? And, and I think that's a great thing to mention because he can either wear a badge or he can 
physically tell everybody in the set, or sometimes after a while, people know that when I do when I work with them, I'm gonna I'm gonna either pat hands or I'm gonna. I mean, how does he normally handle a star through? Does he just touch and and walk through? He sometimes he'll reach up and pull his hand up. I I, th- I think that that they're gonna see that throughout their square dance you know career that that uh, they're gonna see people that have those kind of issues. And and especially people that, that don't want their hands squeezed or, or whatever. I, th- I think it's those are things to bring up as they go along. Problems of that nature is why we have open carry law down in Texas. You know, no, I'm just kidding. In that regard, but it's it's difficult to teach styling habits to people who have a physical handicap, and you have to adjust for them. And like this person you're talking about, if they can't get their hand up, everybody in the square needs to know that. And I think it's their responsibility to say, I can't get my hand up any higher than this, so please adjust to me, and I will dance along with you in that regard. I think it's, like I said, it's their responsibility to say that. I see ladies oftentimes that have a a badge on that says, don't swing me. And I have found here lately especially in the last 20 to 25 years, that so much of that, the ladies think that, may I borrow you just a second? What is your name, hon? Eva? Eva Murray from Maryland. Is that in the United States? Okay, good. It's north of Texas somewhere, I think. (laughs) Uh, But we have to adjust all of those things. So many ladies, I wish I had a head mic, but anyhow, we're going to swing. Put your head up here. With, I'll hold the microphone. I'll put the darn thing in my pocket. Can you hear me now, with, even with it here? And, and in doing the swing, so many women, if, we, if we're going to swing the corner and you're here and we're going to promenade, the man will do this. And so many women think that that coffee grind and crank is a swing because that's all they've ever seen because the men don't know how to swing the lady. And and we teach, and I've always taught, any time you swing a lady, she becomes your partner. Any time. If the caller doesn't intend for it to be that way, he shouldn't have called a swing or he shouldn't permit a swing in that regard. But I'm the man and I'm in control of the swing, or should be. And in doing the swing, and I noticed that she swings really well. And my position is here, and it's up to me to place her right here beside me. Mike, come over here and be her corner just a minute. And like he was saying there just a minute ago, and we used to do this years ago. We're going to do a swing and then an alley man left. And then she's got to go to him. And we're swinging, and I swing her, and then I place her. And by the time I turn, my corner's here ready for me. And I've placed her in the position to swing. But here's what you normally see in that regard. Swing. And Allie, man, get there the best way you can. I ain't going to help you now. You? <laughs> and, and that's what happens. And that's not, that's not right. We teach that ladies are delicate. They're like crystal glass. They could break really easily, and they should be treated that way. And, gentlemen, if you make your lady look good, you will look good beside her. And we teach you, you look at each other to swing. I wish Deborah were in here. They're in the, uh, uh, the Women Callers Committee at the same time. You know, this styling session and the Women and Callers Committee ought not be at the same time because we need the women in here. And uh, Deborah is a tall lady. And, and I have to adjust to her. I have to get my hand up high on the blade of her shoulder in the back back here to hold her up. And like Mike was saying there a while ago, now I teach, like in ballroom dancing, that the lady's hand should be here on my shoulder. She should push against me. She should be pushing here. She should lean back and make me hold her up. But don't throw your head back. That's that uh, phase 15 round dancing type stuff, you know, or whatever you call it, or, you know, or dancing with the stars. This ain't dancing with the stars. 
Our activity is not dancing with the stars, but we should have dancing ability. Last night I watched the dance that we were doing in there last night, and I and I'm and it's on it's recorded and this is on recording, and I'm going to say that some of the styling sucked at the dance last night, and we need to work on this tons in square dancing, and and it has been and it was in the the uh, program about this session that many callers have said, I don't have time to teach styling in my class. I've got to hurry up and get the people out and into the club. And my comment is, you don't have time to not teach styling. Like Mike said, he play, does a play party with them. Uh, when do they pay? First, second, third night? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be paying right away, but they're no, they actually we don't close the class. We keep it open for new people to come in for the first three weeks. So yeah. week four. Ours is only two weeks. They're paid up by the second week. It's, if you notice on my handout, the second sentence says, start teaching styling at the very beginning in parentheses after they pay. You know, as soon as they pay, then you can start teaching styling. But until they pay, you don't want to run them off with a whole bunch of stuff that you're doing to begin with. The, first thing that, the only thing that we teach on the first beginning night is we dance tall. You know, and look tall and you dance tall. And, and Mike, like Mike said, you lean forward just a little bit and you slide your feet on the floor. And and at 99% of the people that are there on the first night have either got on tennis shoes or rubber sole shoes and they can't dance worth the dog. And we don't tell them anything until after they pay their money. And as soon as they pay their money, then the first thing I say, you'll find that you can dance a whole lot better in leather sole shoes or boots. Well, the second night after they paid, they all come in with leather sole shoes on. Them. Nobody wears uh, tennis shoes anymore. And one reason that they don't is that Deborah appoints a sheriff of the class. He gets she gets he gets a sheriff badge. Oh, am, am I not close enough? Okay, sorry. And 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 the sheriff gets a badge. And. and I think the wife gets a little earring or something or a dang or something that has a, has a star on it as well. And and so the sheriff is there. If anybody shows up in tennis shoes, they pay a fine. And all kinds of things they pay a fine. If they don't treat the lady real nice, they pay a fine. And and, and all this money goes into a pot. We tell them it, it, that's to buy the refreshments at the end of the class, you know, when we get done. But it goes, and, and people pay attention to that. And if, if we as a caller mess up a routine, we got to pay a fine, and we pay just like everybody else does. And some of the men come into the class, and some of the angels that in the club that are coming in, they came in the door the other night, and they took out a dollar and handed it to the sheriff right as they came in the door. You know, we'll pay our fine up front. <laughs> they make a game out of it. They ain't nothing any better than swinging with a good swinger. This lady is really good. And your name again? Eva. Eva Barn. Thank you very much. No, it's understandable. Get, go ahead and sit down, Eva. Now, you've got to adjust your swinging. Turn her loose, Stephen. <laughs> what am I on? Turn me up on 2B back. Just a minute. 2B. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Because I want to put this microphone in my pocket. I don't want to have to hold that thing. But like I said, Deborah's a tall lady. She's five foot ten, and it's nice to swing with her. You know, that's uh, I tell everybody that's one reason I married her. She could keep up with me walking. I didn't have to bend over to kiss her. Now, if you have to adjust, if if I'm going to swing Deborah, I've got my hands up here. I can't do that with this lady. As soon as I know that she's smaller. I've got to adjust myself to her because she can't adjust to me. She'd be standing on her tiptoes if she did. But I have to adjust to her. Lean back just a little bit because I've got to hold you up. Push on my shoulder right here. Push with this hand. You should be stiff from the waist up. From the waist down, you're flexible and you can move. And you look at each other as you swing. And every now and then, Deborah will cross her eyes at me. You know <laughs> Oh, we're swinging, and I can't cross my eyes. Thank you, hon. But that you have to adjust to whomever you're dancing with. And 
One of the first things that it says in our styling, and our styling committee chairman when we first did all of this is Melton Luttrell, and he's sitting here in here with us right now. The first thing, one of the first things that's written is everybody should hold their hands in ready dancing position. Your hands in your pocket or your hands droop down are not ready dancing position. You've got to be, what is square dancing? Take a hand, turn it loose. Touch a hand, turn it loose. Constantly. So you've got to have your hands ready to use them. And, and you have to stress it and you have to teach it and you have to work on it every class night. It doesn't happen just one night and, and it's all taken care of. And as we said in the paper there, we try to dance a little bit with everybody in the class for these types of things. Are they holding the lady correctly? Are the, is the lady got her, is she balanced and ready to swing? Is she leaning back? And the counter dancing that Mike was talking about a while ago, over and over and over we have to stress counter dancing. Every week with everything that we do. Come here, Mike. If we're going to do a turn through or an, or an alley mound or whatever it might happen to be, it's a forearm grip, is it not? Now, what does the word grip mean? Grab a hold. Grip means get a hold. But we don't supposed to do that because we, I've seen ladies with blue marks on their arms and everything. So some jerk grabbed a hold of it and hung on for dear life. You don't have to do that. The counter dancing is a press and a push. The thumb should be loose all the time and never gripping and holding the lady or the man. Any turn that we do, yes. Claudia from Strathmore, Alberta. That forearm grip, we try and say forearm touch. Good point. And uh, for years we used the term pull by. And we still do it oftentimes when we call, and it's a walk by, you know. It's it's it it it, and I try to say that to let them know that you're really not pulling by. I mean, sometimes I will say that box the net, and pull I them enhance by. that, Mike, by saying we we not only walk by, but it's a dancing step. We dance by, dance by. I use the better. word dance, dance, dance all the time. This is square dancing, not square walking, not square stomping or jumping up and down or whatever it might happen to be. They said, John, are you being too darn picky? I've had people tell me that. You're being too picky. Thank God I had some good mentors ahead of me that taught me how to be picky with styling because you cannot believe how much better it is to dance with stylish dancers than it is to not with those that are rough and kicking and stomping and carrying on. Mary Ann regrets she's unable to see you tonight. I recorded that as a square dance. I'm Mary Ann Cornacki. I'm not a caller, but my husband is. And we learned to dance a long time ago. But what is this swing through with your hand? You stick your hand out to me. and that, That's not a swing through. Mary Ann, we talked about this uh, yesterday somewhere, and I can't remember exactly where it was. It, it was right here in this room, it was in and this it was room. in a styling session. And it, yeah. And what has happened, sweetheart? is Caller Lab has recognized and written in our styling thing that we recognize their regional differences in styling. And that's one of them. And it has been said for many years, you know, once we develop the programs of dancing from basic through C3A that Caller Lab recognizes, and I've heard it said many times, and they call it higher level. I, I, I personally despise that term because there ain't nothing any higher level than mainstream as far as I'm concerned. It may be more complicated programs, but to me it's no higher level, and I don't like that term. But anyway, the t t cliche has been the higher the level, the lower the hand, and that's what's happened. And I have seen uh, C4 dancers their hands are down here by their side. They never raise their hand. And uh, Barry Klasper and I have been talking about it quite some time. And, uh, but, you know, we are the only country in the world that won't standardize. Germany don't have a problem. Do you, Don? Mm -mm. Every other country I've been in, Japan, 
New Zealand, Australia, most of Canada. Some of Canada has let American crap drift into your dancing. I've seen it. But for the majority, you teach good styling. And there are some areas in the country that do. Now, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where we are, we've changed three times. When we first learned to dance, it was everything was forearm hold, ocean waves and everything. And then we got the idea that maybe the hands up thumb grip, this was being used. And it was easy to adjust from there, from an ocean wave balance, to a right and a left through to go right into that handshake position. So that's we went that way. And then after Caller Lab came out with their recommendation of the palm-to-palm -palm situation, then that's what we adopted in our area. And then we had a caller come in. He, he's in our area, and he was teaching more than anybody else at the particular time and teaching more people, and he started teaching the handshake position and ocean wave position, and we've got a darn mess going on in our area right now. Toby and Judy Thomason and Carl Sims are from my area, and, and Melton is too, and, and we're fighting that battle like crazy down there right now. And we've got three callers that are teaching the handshake position, and they, we ain't going to change. Well, they forgot we got an open carry law down there right now. <laughs> that do it that I know they've always used the forearms it, now they've gone to hands and they I mean they're just they're all in North Carolina but they've always used the other but then they hand you your hand now I I, I don't know whether we will ever uh, settle the problem or not I noticed at the dance last night that there was more handshake position than any other styling on the floor and we're in an area and we've got a lot of people here that are from that type of dancing. Stephen, what do y'all do out in Seattle? Mostly it's the, the palm uh, with, with resistance on both sides. Uh, try to avoid thumbs as much as possible. Right, right. Avoiding that thumb. And that's what we, we talked about yesterday is avoiding that thumb grip at, at all costs because injuries to hands occur when you're, when you're grabbing thumbs. So but all, I've, I've never seen a problem all over Europe. Have you, Walt? Uh, a problem with hand positioning in Europe anywhere? Well, or Munich, Germany. I have to say that ninety-nine percent of Europe is using this this thumb grip thing, almost exclusively. I haven't seen any injuries from it, but there's a potential there. But it's pretty much standard all across Europe. So, so it is a thumb grip. You're grabbing thumbs. Don? Even though we teach, we actually stand up and teach the, the palm to palm rather than grabbing the thumbs, it develops into this real quick. And they, they won't shake it unless you stop and call it to their attention every time you see it. But then it gets kind of tedious because you run into a lot of stop and go dancing. And it, it is a situation here in the United States, and it has been. This came up at our first Caller Lab convention in 1974 because I brought it up. I stirred up the mess at the first convention, and you can't believe the arguments that we got into with regard to hand positioning and styling. It was unbelievable. And so many of the callers, our leaders, that established and started Caller Lab, and they said, oh, no, we're not going there. Don't even think about it. And I said, why not? We need to talk about it, and we need to do something about it. And so the consensus at that convention in 1974 is that we should go to palm-to-palm palm palm hand positioning. But we had some errors and said, we don't care what you say, we're not going to change. And they have not. The, the, the South Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi forearms, Always have always and, been, that and way. in New England, it's forearms, and uh, the the handshake position. I don't know where it started, but it's getting it's it's really prevalent. 
I said in the very beginning that I would teach people to square dance by crawling around on their hands and knees if we would all agree. I saw no reason for us not to agree. But we ain't agreed because, like I said, we got people who say they ain't going to change and nobody's going to tell me what to do. So we're fighting that battle. I think we probably will for as long as I live. It, I, I ain't going to live too much longer anyway. But <laughs> the, the annoying part to me is the fact that you could be in a square and you'll have some people dancing hands up and some people dancing hands down, and you, as a dancer, have to adjust. There comes a time, I, I think, when we run square dance weekends and we have different, you could just say, hey, guys, let's all decide what we're going to do tonight. Let's take a vote, you know, or in your square when you simply start the tip. Look around. Are we doing this? Are we doing this? So that you're not up and down and trying to figure out where everybody's at. As the United States National Convention, when I dance, I spend most of my time trying to figure out how I'm going to join hands with somebody in front of me. And I feel like I'm dancing up and down like a robot, both hands going up and down constantly, trying to figure out how we're going to dance, hold hands with uh, the people in front of us. And, and it's ridiculous, in my opinion. Melton? Other than Lutchell, thank you. Fort Worth, Texas. Toledo, Texas. You don't know where Fort Worth is. I mean, you don't know where Toledo is. I was just going to comment, and I missed a lot of the thing. I'm sorry. But I was going to comment that the problem with this, if you haven't already addressed it, is the teaching because, as you recall, John, years ago we took the vote, so to speak, of how to handle all this thing before we actually got into it because the hands-up position was popular on the West Coast with Bob Osgood's uh, teaching of all of that in the handbook that he put out. And other parts of the countries were a little different. And the higher the level, the lower the hands, as you say. So we were having a meeting one time in the early days, and I had a person who will rename unnamed, but a very prominent teacher. He said, look, he said, my dancers prefer hands down. And I said, when did they prefer hands down? He said, well, from the very start. I said, what do you mean from the very start? He said, well, when we very first started, they wanted the hands down. I said, BS. I said, are you a teacher or are you not a teacher? He said, yes, I'm a teacher. I said, you can teach them to carry a bucket of water, or you can teach them to carry it up here or down here, wherever you want to. You can teach them whatever you want to if you're a teacher. So the, the hands down position is not a fault of theirs. It's a fault of yours for not teaching because when you get students in they don't know up down in middle in between and could care less they will do what you teach them to do until they get overwhelmed at some dance where it's the other way and then they finally give up and do the transition but from the first time that you start teaching they don't know any of that and I feel the same way about the number of basics you teach or whatever basics you teach you get someone into class for the first time, they don't know what they're expecting. They have a good time. They come back, they want more. They want more. They want more. They don't care if the program is mainstream, plus, and past, whatever it is. They want to dance. And you can teach them any list that you want to teach them. You can teach them 51, as they say now, or whatever. And 51 is okay. But I'm preaching against it, I guess, because we worked on this thing for umpteen years and come up with what we thought was the ideal list. And it worked out perfectly for a bunch of years until somebody decided we're not getting enough dancers. No, the trouble is marketing. We're not getting them in the door. If we get them in the door, we can teach them whatever we want to. And I'll shut up. All right. He, he said he was going to shut up. That'll be the day. Yeah. <laughs> I think we still have to teach them that when in, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. As they dance in a square, you got to have them look around and watch the other people dance. If the gentleman across is not twirling his gal and his gal doesn't twirl and my gal likes to twirl, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to note that as, as, a, as a partner. When we do the singing call and that thing comes around, I'm going to make sure I don't twirl her, that I treat her as she is treated by her partner. I'm Barb from Calgary, Alberta. With regard to dancing hands up, I just wanted just one comment. I'm a short dancer, and I've danced with a lot of tall men who, when their hands are up, my, my hands are actually above my head. So it's just something to think about when you're the man, that sometimes with a shorter lady it would be nice if they just came down a little bit so we're not kind of dancing with our hands over our head. Certainly should. 
it's the man's responsibility to adjust to the lady, to make the lady look as good as you possibly can. Make her look bad, you look worse beside her. You have to teach this. You have to teach every bit of this to every dancer that you've got. They don't know anything. They walk in to learn to square dance, and 99% and of them have never even seen one before. They've heard of it, but they've never seen one. You have to teach them every little bitty thing. Well, if I may, I haven't taught here in the USA in a good many years. In Europe, when we teach forward and back, what we see after a couple of weeks is feet don't move and it's, you know, it's like they're trying to smack each other. How are you dealing with that here? What are you teaching? What, did, what, did you hear me last night when I was coming to Patter? I had an alley man left to an alley mo style and balance. Here's what I saw. What did I say? Did anybody hear? I stopped and I said, that's not a balance. That, it, I, I see stand on one foot and kicking the other. That's not a balance. That's called stand on one foot and kick the other one, you know. and uh, Huh? Balance, step, touch, and back touch. You don't agree? It's not a matter of agreeing. If you're, if you're keeping to the beat of the music, what does it matter whether you ra raise your foot two inches or you, uh, you raise it uh, six inches? It's the difference in doing the call that was called. A balance is a step touch and a back touch. If you do this, one, that ain't two. a balance. That's kick your foot. It's, a four, it's really a four count. It's a one, two, three, four. Right. Or sometimes the music will tell you forward, step, step, back, step, step. It's the type. It's that music. Milton? I didn't shut up, Milton. Let's look again. I, I was watching last night when you made that comment. And I thought that's so appropriate because I've done the same thing at the same time. But so help me, Pete, at least three or four people in the same square I was watching, after you said that, still, still did the step kick. So it, it's hard to get rid of. It's, you, you, can't, you can't teach it in one time. Uh, those people, that they did a step kick anyway. That's the only thing they've ever done. They probably never were taught how to do a balance. It's our responsibility as a teacher to teach it. If you don't know how to teach it, go learn. Find out where you can learn it. Brian Julianne of Pittsburgh. One of the things, too, when you're dancing, you're a scholar and you're dancing, the, call, the dancers watch you. So if you goof around and you, make, you, don't, you cut corners, they're going to think it's okay to cut corners. So you're as an example to the dancers. You have to be at your best behavior all the time. Absolutely, and I feel the angels are the same way. The angels, they'll mimic the angels in, as far as they're going. So I think it's really important as an angel to dance properly. I agree, and I think some of the best compliments that I've ever had in, in my entire calling career is the dancers that I have taught to dance. And they say, boy, you practice what you preach, don't you? When I dance, I dance like I have taught. And I take that as a great compliment. And uh, like it, but you just have to keep working at it all the time. John, how do you teach forward and back with with your dancers? From where? From a squared set. If you're so. in a squared set, forward and back is eight counts. One, One two, two, three, four, back, two, three, four. What do they call or suit? Heads go forward and back and square through. No wonder they start stepping on one foot and kicking the other one. It's not their fault. Whose fault is it of what's going on in our activity? Look in the mirror. It's our fault, those of us who got the microphone in our hand. Any problems that we have or any good things that we have is all a result of us holding the microphone and doing the teaching. And uh, I'm glad that you thank you for being here from Calgary. One of the greatest dancing areas in the world is in Calgary, Alberta, all over that area. You want to say something, Ted? Uh, Ted Rott with Pennsylvania. Uh, I have a I have a problem with uh, I think you made the comment do it when in Rome do as the Romans do, I feel an obligation to teach the definition, so I always teach the definition, but I don't insist they do it because I know, what's what's the point of me doing palms up if, if 99.9% .9 of the dancers in my area aren't going to put their palms up, uh, so I I tell them just palms up I say if you see somebody with palms up put your palms up that's the way it's defined. But when you go out to dance in our area, nobody has palms up, and 
I, 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 I can't, I, I feel as though I'm wasting my time insisting that they have palms up if all the angels, the dances they go, we go to, every place they go to in our area, all the regional dances, nobody has palms up. There's one caller in northern Jersey that teaches palm up, and this woman comes out to our dances, and she always puts her palm up, and I accommodate as soon as she's there with her palm up. I, that's the way I learned in 1966, palm, palms up. Uh, but I've, I've adjusted. I adjusted to whatever, whatever anybody comes to me to do as a dancer, I do. If they have palms up, I do palms up. If they uh, have hands, hands. If they do forearm, I do forearm because it's, it's, it's a practical way to dance. It really is. And I think you have to say, you, I mean, you owe it to your dancers to say, this is how it's written. This is how we, we write. This is how the sonnet is written. It's a palms up. It's like teaching circle to a line. I teach them circle to a line. I want them to know circle to a line because if they ever dance with people that really dance well in international communities and in areas of the United States where they do circle to a line, circle to a line, it's a joy if, you, if it's done right. If they're going to slide to a line, okay, you're going to slide to a line. You know, and I teach, I, teach, <laughs> when I, when I teach them circle to a line and I teach them circle to and my angels are just struggling with it for, you know, weeks. I don't care. I want to teach them circle to a line because that's the way it's written. And I think you owe that to your dance answers to say this is the way it's written you're going to see this and then show them this and and show them the difference but ted like you said in your area if the whole area is dancing hands down then i was an instructor i would teach it the same way i still think i owe it to them to tell them the definition and, and let them be aware they could go to a national and have a lot of people there have hands up at least they're aware that this is okay these people aren't strange Absolutely. And, and I, I, I agree with you. I insist on circle to a line doing it the right way for many, many weeks. And then before they graduate, I say, oh, by the way, when you get out there, some people are going to do this, and I don't even know how to do it. I, I get some angel that does, does it, and I say, this is, Let's, this is slide to a line. And I, so they're prepared when they go out there. When somebody starts sliding them, they're, they're not panicked. You know, this is one of the things I wanted to see that we get on film. So why don't we get two couples to come on up here? Just, we need two couples to come on up. Come on. We got one, two. Fantastic. Okay. So we got two couples. So let's have, uh, go ahead, you be number one, Don. And we got, so if we have the sides, lead to the right. Okay, sometimes we circle to a line. Sometimes we, I, I often teach lead to the right and smile. And, and make them stop and do a right and left through and get, get them used to doing that. But when I teach them circle to a line, you join hands in a circle, you circle halfway around. At that point, the outside dancer, the right side, or the left side dancer on the, on, the, on the outside couple drops hands. It's the only person that's doing that. And as the outside couple slides out to their left, the inside couple does a long, slow California twirl. A long, slow, and so I teach California twirl before I teach circle to a line. Um, but I, and I think that's really important. Let's get back into position again. And Don, let me just take your your spot for a second. If I may make a comment on that too, um, as soon as the inside, as the person who starts on the outside sees that the other couple drops hands, he raises his hand at that same moment to let that lady know she's going to go forward under that hand. I see so many ladies backing up into that position. We did lead right, circle to the line. This is the way we often see it written. Go ahead, let's do it again, okay? Gonna do it again. Lead right, circle to the line. And he did it wrong. He, he made the arch way too soon, and the lady walked into the middle of the square and then had to turn around and back up and get over there to the other end and like they never made it. You, you want it right one more time? Right, okay. Lead right. Circle halfway. Slide sideways. And a slow California twirl. And the line is at the position of the stationary couple. At this point. Now, that is one thing that was in the uh, art committee yesterday. 
I was not at the meeting, but I know what it was, and I had a report on it about this very thing as how far apart are the two lines if the heads or sides lead right in a circle to a line. That's a big debatable issue right now. And it came up because one caller said he gets out in the floor, hold your hand, don't turn loose, and he hangs on and he pulls the people together. Step up, Stephen. And he pulls the two lines together and he's in between and they have to end at this point. See, some of you are shaking your head no, but you can't believe the ones that were shaking their head yes. And that's a big debatable point. And it is being taken up by the caller uh, choreographic application committee, which Dottie Welch is the chairman of right now, and they're going to start reviewing it and studying it because it's not only this line, it's every line that we make. How far apart are they? Now, in the challenge world, they pull them together automatically, whether they're told to or not, regardless. But in the basic mainstream world, it's different. So that's an issue that's going to have to be settled. So, but it's, as far as I'm concerned, that circle to a line because that, the, whoever breaks to the line, who was the side man in this case, slides sideways two side steps, and he don't go forward because, you know, I'd say show me where it's written that you go forward after you break that line. So that's a debatable issue that's going on right now. Did any of you see that when you were in the committee? It was pretty hot, wasn't it? It was. And I think the issue is um, that there's no definition of what breathing means to a square. It's, there's nothing written in Caller Lab, and I was kind of surprised to find that out yesterday. That's correct. We talk about square breathing, but there's no definition of it anywhere, so that's got to be defined. And and, it, and it's talked about in everything that we do. You know, uh, you, if you have a two-faced line, you do a couple circulate and bend the line. How far apart are the lines? Some say far apart. Others are saying very close together. So we've got an issue that's got to be settled. Right, right. The other thing I want to make sure you show, too, is when you've got couples doing a right and left through, I want the gentleman to make sure that he extends his hand out there because very often, the, uh, the, particularly early on with, with new dancers, as you give a right hand walk by, And I noticed on doing the right and left through, and that left hand, gentlemen, you should be leading the lady around in the courtesy turn. And put your hand out with the palm up, as Mike showed there just a minute ago, and, and I do that, and if the lady wants to hold my hand while we're doing a courtesy turn, she's going to have to put her hand up here in my. You know what we're seeing so much this day and time in a courtesy turn is a left handshake position. Toby, I know you guys have seen it. Carl, in our area, it, it's getting so prevalent. I saw it last night on the dance floor. Every right and the left through that we did, half the floor was doing a left-hand courtesy, uh, handshake position on the courtesy turn. It sucks. It's really uncomfortable. And I was demonstrating it with a lady down in our home who's a very good dancer, and I sh uh, put it in this position, and I've seen so many men drop their hands down. Look where her hand is. And she said, it's embarrassing. You know, get your hands up. That ain't ready dancing position down here. Ain't got nothing to do with it. The hands are up here, and they should be up here in, 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 for the courtesy turn. Now, I noticed that Laura put her hand back here behind her back in doing the courtesy turn there just a moment ago. And we actually eliminated that 40 years ago. But it's unbelievable that the callers that, that have not eliminated out of that vocabulary. If the lady does put her hand back there, what happened was, go ahead and put your hand back here. So many, oftentimes the man would grab a hold of it and wouldn't turn her loose. You know, and, and wind up 
causing an injury, and 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 that should not be. It everything you have to treat, like I said, you have to treat the lady like they're going to break just any moment. John, how do you teach where the man's hand position goes on that courtesy turn? The hand position should be right in the small of the lady's back, right at the waistline, or slightly above the waistline. Now, go ahead. There, what is it that we did away with, having the ladies put their hand back? Or the having the, hands? Yeah, the man, the lady. <laughs> right. Now, some it, it is written that the lady may place her hand on the hip or right in this area right here, but the man should never reach over and grab a hold of that hand. Yes, hon? Uh, Claudia from Strathmore. If the lady's hand is out in the back like this, once those new dancers start actually dancing with the rest and they're dancing faster, that can be quite injurious too because that elbow gets in the way, right? Right. You can't. So, you it, the hand's not in ready dancing position back here behind the back. It well, should that come out. Sticking out, and somebody else can come bang along somebody, and bang somebody, bang it. into your elbow, or cause an injury in that regard. Stephen, I've seen. An, I've angeled a bunch of lessons in my area, and the gentlemen or the callers who usually say, girls, we want you to give the men a target because they're afraid that they're gonna, the boys are going to put their hand in the wrong place. But I'm like, if you keep that other hand free, we don't have an open carry law. But but you have a, you have a hand free. If he puts it in the wrong place, you can correct it quickly. All right. Exactly. And I have, I, we teach the ladies. If that man does anything he should not do, turn around and face him, take a step back, and slap the thunder out of him. <laughs> and I'll see it. I will yeah. see it, and I will be right beside you to defend you. And I, it's wrong, and it should not be done. Carl, you wanted to say something while ago. I'm Carl Timms from Arlington. Talk about injuries. <clears throat> 19, we quit dancing about 1965. And about 19, about 1976, 77, we started taking lessons again. Second night out, we had a guy. Uh, my wife was baby size, five foot in high heel. We're doing a, a, a weave the ring. And this guy, was, he was probably as tall as Melton, he weighed about 250. He grabbed her. We went from that band to the hospital. She had no shoulder problems for the rest of her life. So the weave the ring and this fancy polka doll, as far as I'm concerned, can be eliminated. Oh no, I never do a fancy thing, and I get a lot of bad luck. Thank you, Carl. Okay, while we've got two couples up here, may I show something, Mike? Please, John. That uh, we saw a lady do, and I had forgotten about it, and one of our local callers saw it at the same time Deborah and I did in St. Louis, Missouri, at a caller school, and he showed us again the other day, and I'm going to use it. Deborah and I both are going to use it from now and get closer together. We're going to do a square through. We're going to teach square through. Join right hand with the person you're facing. It's a handshake position, and we teach so you don't shake the hand. You don't pump the sucker up and down. It's a handshake position. It's not a pump handle, okay? We're going to do a square through one, and that means that you will dance straight by, and you drop the hand as soon as it gets to the leg, and don't hold on to it, and you go through straight through, and don't turn. Ready, go. It's one and done. Notice the word I said? Done. Now, face the person beside you. We're going to add one more hand, and we change hands. It's a left hand this time, and you join the left hand shake position, and you dance by, go, one, and done. Face back into the other couple again. Now, we have done a square through two. That was a square through two hands, and we're going to do that again. Square through two. Go two, 
one and done. Count them backwards, okay? Face back in. We're going to do a square through three this time. Y'all know how we've taught it. We've gone through piece by piece. Ready? Square through three. Go three, two, one, and done. Face the other couple again. This time we're going to do a square through four. You've been taught. We know how to go it all the way through. Are you ready? Go. Square through four. Four, three, two, one, and done. I like that. The dancers caught on to it. It meant something to them. They understand. In Germany, it may not mean a darn. You have to change the word. You use something. What would you call it over there? It, it, it would work. Okay. <laughs> uh, most of the German people, they understand that square dancing is in English, and so they, they pick it up and they do it that way. Okay, partner trade, face back in. But you might keep that in mind as far as the teaching thing for doing square through. Mike? Uh, the only thing that I would add to this is just a visual hook. My visual hook on square through is that your nose, your toes, and your belly button never turn away from the other dancers you're doing this call with. That there's four people, it's a four dance person call and your nose your toes and your belly button never turn away from those other people don let me take your place just a second here's the thing that the, that, that we have so much of a problem with is not turning the hand loose like it should be like i said the hand should turn loose as just as you're coming toward your body and 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 you're done with it but here's what so many men will do we're going to do a square through two ready go square through and he's hung on and turned that woman in the wrong direction. How many of you seen that when you first teach choir through? See it in the right. Time and time again. You, you have to teach them to not, how to not do that. Yeah. Early on, as they walk by each other, they drop hands. Right. Like I said, it's take a hand, turn it loose. Touch a hand, turn it loose constantly. I don't know that it's helped, but I always teach square through without hands to begin with. Walk right shoulders face in, left shoulders face in, right shoulders face in, left shoulders face in. Then reverse it, go the other way, left shoulders face in, right shoulders. Teach them to walk around the square without hands forever, put hands with it. Always facing in, as you said. Always face in. Walk one side of the square, then the other side of the square. No hands involved till I've done it every way you can do it. Then I pour, I let them use hands. I'm sure that we all, uh, if, if we got ten callers together, we'd have ten different styling type situations of teaching what we teach but whatever it takes to get the message across i keep getting in front of the camera walt i'm sorry it's hard to see through my body <laughs> you know one of the other one of the other subjects i want to talk about is how you teach them to how you teach lost squares to your dancers i see a lot of of, of our dancers that don't know what to do when their square gets lost or their square breaks down john do you have a way to teach them we teach them, uh, I'm not certain, but I think the standardized method is, is to go home immediately and the number one lady, no, the head two ladies get their partner in their corner by the hand and the, she backs them out beside and the lines are at the side position. Right. I, 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 am I, I not correct? We we went we went around. This is back in the 80s in Call Lab. We had a way that we were teaching at that time that we had that, that we'd Form lines as soon as you can. I mean, if you can just form any kind of line, form a line. One line faces the other. Normal couples get right back, watch the rest of the floor. When the caller sees that, he'll ever say, everybody go forward and back. And you can start dancing again. You may not have your partner when you get done, but that can be corrected as you get home. As you promenade home or as you get home, you can switch around and get back. Steve? So I was, I've, I've read the, the materials, and Deborah had a thing at a weekend where she said, make sure that it is the head ladies doing the work so that you're in a side position so you can all turn and glare at the caller and say, as if to say, hey, we're waiting for you. Right. If you just do the head side, then you're, you're, you're blocking the vision. But if you're looking at side walls, then you can turn, them and turn your eyeballs, your faces to look. And she's a lot more dramatic about it than, than what Stephen explained. But if you could see Deborah, if Deborah in here, I'd let her show you how to do it. But she said, you make the, get, make the line at the side position, and that way all eight of you can see the caller. And you stand there and go, <laughs> call something we can do. You <laughs> Make motions or whatever. Get his attention, her attention, whomever the caller is. 
That's a, that's a good idea. If you could make it where all the dancers can be looking at the caller or at least see the, and see the other dancers at the same time, that's great. The other thing that I, I, I teach, and we at one time when we first were developing this law squares procedure, it was the guys you know should just tell everybody to go home. But but I don't know about you guys, but but I know that guys are not one the type to give up. They're not ones to ask for directions. So at that point, Call Lab realized, and that's why we've got head ladies mentioned in there, that the, the I, I tell them, the head ladies, you're in charge. I said, when you realize that we've got such a mess that you can't make lines, I said, I want the head girls to put their hands on their hips and stare. And I said, you know, when you see two women in the square that are got their hands on their hips and they're staring around your square, I said, <laughs> everybody remembers your, your mother with her eyes on your back as you were getting into the cookie jar. I said, head ladies, I, you're in charge. you got to have somebody in charge. So I'll, I'll t- and, and because the head ladies, after they square up, are in charge of, of putting the sets back together again and making those lines, put them in charge. Have them just put their hands on their hips and start glaring around that square. And all of a sudden, you see two people just standing there looking at you like that with that those eyes that women have. You, 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 you stop. You get, they get your attention real quick. They don't have to say a thing. So when you square your set, go ahead and square your set. Let's have a – and actually, let's, let's – come on. Stephen, you guys be number one couple and, and be number two out here. Because at that point in time, that head lady then looks over at her corner. And she's got her partner by the hand, and she stares at him with those eyes, and she tells him to move down. And he moves down with his partner, and he slides his. She then pulls her partner out to the, to the side, and she's got him. She's in charge of that entire line. And then you make faces at the caller. You know, That's right. There you got it. Good. There you got it. And, and, and we tell them to do this as quickly as possible. There's no need in standing in the square debating over who screwed it up. You know, it's messed up, so fix it. Toby, you ain't said a darn word. Don't you talk. What am I going to say? Toby Thomas from Denton, Texas. I, I teach, and I've listened to John and all these other teachers from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I teach just about like what he's saying. I teach the styling, but I teach these ladies to be defensive. And just like John says, I tell my new dancers, if that man is not treating you properly, you slap the fire out of him, and I'm going to be right down there to protect you because he's not going to treat you. You gentlemen, you have to make your partner look as good as she can, and that is your problem. That is your job on this thing to make your partner look great. But I do teach styling all the way through. In fact, on my fourth lesson, I ask the ladies to start wearing full skirts. They don't have to wear the petticoats. They can wear the prairie skirts, the short skirts. But then I can start teaching styling and skirt work, and that really changes. Up. Now, when they come to lessons, they're thinking square dancing before I ever get them to the lesson. So I've got them hooked. There you go. I, th- I think it's important. In, in, in California, we, we don't, the gals aren't, can't get away with slapping the guys as, as probably easy as they can in Texas. But I teach them to, to look at them in the eyeball and go, ow. If it's, if it's sore, they're holding too hard, let them know. Go, you know, let them know. Or, or, or if, it, if, they just, if, it's, if it's off, you don't have your hand in the right place, correct their hand and look at them and growl at them. Say, hey. Shout really uh, loud. Let them know. That's, that's Yo, not. Ow. Yeah. Just, just l- a lady caller that we had from uh, uh, Nova Scotia, Gloria Roth. She taught her dancers to yell, "Ouch!" If the man's doing something that should not be doing, uh, and, and that we teach the ladies, you know, what do I do with my hand on a courtesy turn? I've got this hand over here. You said don't put it back here where you he can hold on to it. What do I do with that thing? Hold that sucker out like you're going to high T, you know, and look like a dancer. The man don't look well. I look stupid doing that if I were dancing the position. It I, I hate to do a courtesy turn as a man, uh, or be in the man lady's position to a man courtesy turning me or a woman courtesy turning. That's one of the most awkward feelings I've ever had in my life. Because you know? <laughs> it just ain't natural to me. So, but you have to teach dancing. You have. As Toby said, you just have to stress it. You have to keep teaching it. And every single night you work on it and with every single call. And I fussed at our newer callers at our training session the other day. They all were teaching, and they each taught a call. And Deborah and I didn't. We were the, the instructors. 
and we didn't say anything derogatory to any one of them. There were five of them until after they all got done. We said good things about what they did good. Then after they got done, I fussed at every one of them. There wasn't a single one of them that taught the dancers how many steps it takes to do the call and the styling of each of the calls that they taught. They taught the definition, and I said the timing and the styling is all in the same block. It's part of the definition. Don't leave it out. And so I fussed at them about it. And so hopefully the next time they teach, they will include that because we should. It's part of the definition. How about a nice hand for our demonstration dancers? Thank you, Thank guys. You guys very Thank much. you, guys. I think it's important, as we talked about, to include it when you teach the call. And very often, in between the tips, let them talk a little bit. And then if you want to do a demonstration, bring somebody out. It's nice to have a portable mic or a wireless mic to be able to stick on your head or to hold in your hand. And bring a square out and show them. Demonstrate the call. Those visual learners in your class are going to pick up that call by watching it first. And you can talk out and point out the styling. Notice the guy's hands when they do this. If it's a two-dancer call or a, or a four-dancer call, it's, I always find it, it's nice for me to be in there because then I can show them as I'm dancing. I can make those points of, about eye contact and that kind of thing. But, but you can do that in between a tip and then square them up. Boom, you're right back into it. And, and do that as you do your lessons. If you're teaching a lady's chain, the, it, it, the lady knows she should know who she's going to. She's going to the one right straight across from her. But it's the man's responsibility to know that she's coming. And he has to be ready to receive her. Put that arm out, give her a landing pad. If Absolutely. It's a, if it's a four ladies chain three quarters, I'll look and see who I'm going to get immediately. I don't stand there and wait. And, and I had it demonstrated the other night, and I said, and, and had a lady in the square, and I knew what she's going to do because I had taught her how to do it. Uh, last year and I said if the man ain't ready watch what happens boy she came around and she whacked me in the belly you know? <laughs> get ready dude you know <laughs> to receive me don't just stand there be ready and and so uh, we talk about things we don't we don't teach uh, harmful situations but we try to make a joke out of it but the men have to be ready we had one guy, he was just standing there with his hands in his pocket like this, and the lady had, no, you take your hands out in courtesy tournament, you know. Get ready. Be ready. Help each other out. It's a team dance, and it, we're all working together to make it happen. We'd like to thank you guys for coming out this morning. We knew it yes. was the early session. Thank Walt Burr for the recording. I want to thank all of our demonstration dancers, everybody that talked this, this morning. Nice stand for John Jones. Agents of, and Mike Seastrom. Nice to be here with you guys. Have a great rest of the day. As you go through the various sessions today, a lot of the sessions are being recorded. Please, please, when you talk over the mic, identify yourselves. We can see you in the camera. We cannot see your badges. So please, your name and where you're from, anytime you talk over the mic, please. Dance tall. You got it. And have fun. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, guys.